lost in stagnation or an English cover siege with goals. Just how good is Curtis Jones? Jones. Statistically, Jones's dribbling game looks undercooked. From the eye test, we can see he's blessed with copious amounts of agility, with great acceleration over short distances for a midfielder. His footwork as well has a blend of body feints, changes of direction, as well as foot on the ball rolls, step overs, Cruyff turns. He's a natural technician with the ball. So why the average stats? Well, at the moment, Jones's decision making as to when to carry and when to know his limits is a work in progress as is his ability to shield the ball under pressure. He has a tendency to at times be out muscled. He's got a tendency to get stuck into these type of scenarios whereas the likes of Kovacic, De Jong, they have a superior sense of clarity when they're surrounded and know how to work their way out of the situation with minimal fuss. Jones thought about it, might still take it on. Walcott, he's let the ball bounce and it has gone over his head twice, Jones wider area where it can't cause as much danger. In terms of Jones's possession game, in terms of his passes per game, he hasn't quite broken into register territory or shown enough pause to suggest that he could control a game at the highest level. However, his 92% pass success rate demonstrates an ability to connect the dots accurately and with his natural tendency to want to take the ball under pressure, you can see that if he does tweak that decision making, he could be a very useful press resistant connector in the heart of the midfield battle. He's got the dynamism to make more passes than he currently does and be part of an outfit that outpasses the opposition to death. Furthermore, his receiving skills are brilliant. His first touch, his ability to turn elite and his movement to provide passing options is also excellent. He reminds me potentially of a Steve McManaman after he moved into central midfield for Real Madrid. The question is, will he be able to develop McManaman's football intelligence and sense of purpose with the ball? Otherwise, all these natural ball retention skills will go to waste. Make mistakes, part of the game. And here is Jota! Stats-wise, Jones's creative numbers are pretty average. And whilst you could put that down to a lack of game time, the eye test suggests it's going to be very difficult for Jones to become an elite number 10. He's got good vision, but his judgment of distance is not great. And that leads to him not weighting his passes correctly. And this leads to a constant feeling of good idea, but poor execution. And if he can learn to weight the passes better, it could really hurt defenses. So it's incredibly frustrating seeing these moments of vision go to waste. It's almost as if he gets overexcited by the sheer range of possibilities on offer, but doesn't have the composure to find the right option and execute it with utmost efficiency. Trotzdem und Lemperle macht eigentlich viel richtig. Jones, that's not happening for Robert. Oh, Brighton's header, Simicas. When Jones does get himself into wide areas, he looks a threat, especially down the left. Down the right, his crosses can be hit and miss. Generally, a tad too loopy, but the accuracy isn't too bad. From the left, he has a two-footed threat. He can go down the line and really fire crosses through the six yard area or do his customary shift, work it back onto his right and then hang it into the box. His crosses do get blocked often so he needs to judge better as to when he has the space to actually get a cross off. But overall, an attribute that's bubbling with promise and Jones should actively look to get into the wide areas more often and make this a key component of his game. It's nicely done. It's Curtis Jones, the queue number two. Jones's long pass stats are disappointing and it's not surprising when you look at the eye test. He doesn't have a very solid, reliable technique. It seems prone to breaking down and he at times overhits it or slightly misdirects the pass so it's awkward to receive or for the player to collect it into their stride. Don't get me wrong, at times he can hit a worldie of a long ball but for me to be considered an elite long passer there needs to be a consistency of laser-like precision in order for you to say that that player has mastered the art. Jones is simply no Xabi Alonso in this respect and would be better off restricting his long ball attempts in favour of his short passing game. Aston Villa looking to make a change as well. As that attack breaks down. Liverpool's substitution. 
Salah coming in is Jones, who's tucked it away. Superb. Jones is more of a goal threat than a Kovacic. He's a player who will actively look to take on shots when the opportunity presents itself. His favoured move being cutting in from the left half space and looking for that finesse to the far post. But that's not the only type of shot he can pull off. Left footed volleys close to goal. Weak foot shots across goal. Valve shots. Now just honing in on the valve shot. Jones often has his shot blocked. And that's probably because he has a very spectacular follow through. And the time it takes to go through that entire motion gives defenders more opportunity to get to the shot in time. And despite having his shots blocked, you can tell from the trajectory it would have been a good effort on goal, but he needs to become more efficient in the technique to be more effective in terms of the outcome. If there was another criticism, he doesn't score enough placement type goals just inside the box where he quickly spots gaps to slot in finishes. If he can add this more Lampard-esque quality, he'll become a more consistent goal for it. Alexander Arnold, no one's marking Jones! Kicking towards McAteer. In terms of Jones's heading, the stats seem to be a bit inflated. He can at times win a header, but he's susceptible to not really competing in the air when he feels like he's going to get hurt. Needs to overcome this fear and compete for every ball. Again, the lack of football, consistent football, men's football is noticeable. And it's noticeable in a midfield battle if the opponent doesn't fancy a physical battle. It doesn't send out the right message. Likewise, with his goal threat from the air, it's feeble. You look at the position he plays and with his movement, he should be picking up goals with late runs into the box and planting headers into the back of the net. Similar to what Jude Bellingham is doing right now for Real Madrid. Jones isn't putting his head where it hurts and that limits his overall goal threat. Nottingham Forest rocking a little. Ricardo Pereira too. In terms of his defensive game, Jones is clearly blessed athletically and someone who covers a lot of ground at good intensity. That allows him to generate a lot of defensive actions and as a ball winner, pretty effective. In terms of criticisms, his positional sense can be exploited due to the fact that he rushes out to meet the ball, despite at times the situation asking for him to hold his position. His 1v1 defending can be a mixed bag. When he stands his ground, he's much better but he can be liable to being twisted in and out. Overall, though, I think he's got good potential in this regard. And if he can add on a bit of muscle as well, but retain the dynamism and improve his understanding of when to press and when to fake press but stand his ground, he could be a very competent, excellent ball winner. Here's Kurt Zuma. Tactically, Jones does not look like a natural holding midfielder or a number 10. He doesn't have the positional discipline off the ball to hold the midfield, prefers to chase the ball and win it, and he doesn't have the dead-eyed killer pass and pauser you'd associate with the top 10s. Where he's currently playing for Klopp is probably his best position, this box-to-box -box role where he can do a mixture of controlling, ball winning, at times hug the touchline, and at times be the goal for it. For England, I'd like to see him brought into the fold and perhaps used next to the likes of Rice and Stones to give England a greater press resistance in these deeper areas. The likes of Foden, Bellingham, they seem to suit the more advanced areas like the final third. Jones, I think, could be a player who's used in the middle third as well as the deeper lying third when he comes onto the ball. In conclusion, it's no surprise that Jones is a player who's underdeveloped in quite a few respects. The lack of consistent game time, the injuries disrupting his progress, it's obvious to see why Klopp has been reluctant in making him a fixture of the side to date. On the flip side, he's athletically so blessed and has the raw technical foundation that if he was able to somehow perfect his game, he could honestly become one of the leading box-to-box -box midfielders in Europe. Is that a guarantee to happen? No, because Liverpool as a club are always going to be stacked with new signings and if Jones doesn't rapidly cement his spot within the next two seasons, he could be left in the shadows and at the age of 22 that window of development is closing fast. He needs regular game time right now. Time is off the essence. In my opinion he should have been already on loan to a club like Brighton getting the game time that someone like Billy Gilmore is getting now and come back to Liverpool battle-hardened. One hopes that Klopp now sees enough in him to trust him as a proper first team option but that's something that needs to be monitored over the course of this season and that will decide as to what his overall end score will be. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe. And see you guys again next time. Bye.